Is this crazy shaped Revo Max for you? Stick around and let's find out. Pretty wide tail and a super wide nose. This is the 6.3 version. It's also strictly twin fin and the 6.3 is 35-ish liters. So it's almost like a, kind of my perfect 510 dims usually, but I'm really excited about this because I still haven't ever ridden a shape like this. This is kind of like a step up twin, maybe kind of a groveler. Well, let's uh, see how this goes. First session on the Revo Max, it was amazing. I was actually blown away by how sick the board is. Super floaty for being 35 liters in this first time riding the Ibolic Volcanic. Really fun. And these are the best keel fins I've ever ridden. And it's also cool because um, these are the medium ones, which I thought would be too small for me and the largest would be a little better, but actually they felt amazing. Like just enough release and still enough drive down the line and nice and pivoty. Just kind of what the website he was saying was with the fins, he wanted them to be a little more pivoty and not as kind of tracky than yet not pivoty in the pocket as keels can be. Right, guys we're uh, hitting up another session on the Firewire Revo Max I was extremely impressed I'm gonna call this board the platypus of surfboards it feels like you have a platypus nose and it's just like super interesting because when you stand up on the board you can kind of hop up and then be super towards the nose and it's almost like the board has two areas to surf. It has the first area, which is kind of by the nose, and you can just have your feet up there and do whatever. The second area is more so like by the tail. So it's kind of like you hop up by the nose, do your thing just to pump down the line. And then when you get towards time to do a schwack, you kind of step back a little bit and do the schwack. Now again, usually a pad messes me up here because when you have a pad on, it uh, you kind of don't know where your feet, your feet should be on the pad, it's what it feels like. But when there's no pad, you can kind of just schwack it anywhere. And that's why I like no pad because then you can really just go where your feet need to go. You're not as limited to, oh, I gotta be back by the pad. Oh, this board is sick. And uh, now I need another board. Thanks a lot, Firewire. The Ibolic Volcanic is, like I said, it's the lightest thing ever. Feels really good when you're holding it. That platypus nose, the hull. It's like you're riding a snowboard, like a mind expander snowboard. Once you ride it, you kind of realize that it is pretty much what all surfboards probably should be doing. Um, it feels a lot more natural paddling around and you almost think, why did we ever go towards the, uh, the pointed tip nose? Well, it makes sense, it kind of won't dig as much side to side, but you'd be pretty surprised how undiggy this is. It gets really thin up here, the rail, the rail itself, and the rail stays super thin. It actually is like extremely thin when you're holding it. It feels like a very thin board. It doesn't feel like it has, you know, any volume at all to it. And then towards the tail, again, it keeps the thinness, the whole board, and then the tail gets a little thinner, but it really gets the most thin as you get to that quad V thing out the back. Also, another interesting tidbit is this little spine right here. It It's like extended out the whole way pretty much till the very tip of the nose. Like, I don't know, 12 inches down, five, six inches down is when it starts. And then right away it gets you know, pretty, pretty uprise and then just stays uprise and this little spine just continues all the way back until it gets just bigger and bigger. 
and then it gets met by the rest of these quad V concave. Super unique. Pretty much one, two, three, four. Water just is spewing out the back here. It's crazy. It is crazy. It gets pretty thin right here. The volcanic eyebolic is pretty awesome. It is light. Just picking it up and stuff, it feels really light. This Revo Max shape comes from Daniel Thompson. And he obviously shaped its predecessor, the Revo, which is a much shorter board and has a five fin setup. And the Revo came from its predecessor, the super famous Evo, that really became a hit and I think solidified people's love for this modern planing hull shape. And now I consider Daniel Thompson a household name in the surf world. I really like the fins. These are the medium ones, but I like how loose they are without losing that much drive and they don't slide out. So even if I went to the, if I had the large fins on here, there's a medium and a large of these fins. Um, I don't know if I would like them as much because what's nice about these is they let you throw them around, but I was, I didn't slide out once, like in a way that twin fins slide out. Felt super steady the whole time. All right, y'all, another day, another session on the Revo Max. Board is super fun. I think a lot of people are realizing that, you know, this is the future of surfboards right here, this shape. And it really just unbelievable in how it rides in crappy surf and good surf. As they say, it's a quiver killer, but it actually could be. And don't be scared of a little extra rail line, a little extra foam it is your friend. All right, y'all, we've entered the best part of the review, a play-by-play -play as we watch the FireEye Revo Max in action. And yes, right over there watching, waiting patiently for the next shred. But yeah, but the board's really great at basically everything. I mean, like these are smaller waves with just a little bit of push. And what's nice is there's a lot of that get up and go. Like, and as you just push a little bit of speed in there, it can create its own speed as long as there's a little bit of wave. It's kind of like the mashup where it needs a little bit of something to get going, but I would say it gravels better than the mashup, um, which is interesting because it's kind of being marketed as a step up twin, but definitely can act as a normal mid length. And most mid lengths are very good at groveling for the most part. Um, and that's why a lot of these waves, I'm just going to show how good it does once you get into some white water, you step up on the nose like in this shot, and you can just start riding it like you would a longboard, let those fins hit the shore. This was a pretty powerful left wave, and as you can see backside, it can hold very well, which is great. It's really nice at floaters. Um, and again, for the medium fins, it holds nice. I really like this wave. Very beautiful, perfect wave. It excels at these kind of turns because the twin fin lets you really wrap it around and throw it. But because it still has enough hold, and this, let's just forget that part happened, that it can still hold where you need it. Um, I really enjoy that of the twin fin in general because once you get used to twin fins, what's great is they can release, but they can hold if you have the right fin and you know how to ride them. And that's where this board backside, I didn't find any issues with the backside. Again, I'm a lot better now at riding like here on this one. The up and down pivot's nice and you can still throw it when you need. And then still it has that, all that space up by the nose, you know, all up there that you can still go down the line and go down that white water when there's nothing left. That was a nice big schwack. Shout out Surfline, thank you for the clips. Shout out Sony for these clips. Um, and it's just a really fun board. Like, again, it's gonna be a bummer when I do have to return this to Firewire. Thank you, Firewire, again, for always, you know, letting me demo these boards. And I'm really just loving a lot of the Firewire shapes and they're doing something, they're doing something right because I hop on a Firewire board these days and it just rides how I want it to ride, which I really appreciate. So let's keep going through some of these clips. It's very fast getting around sections like this. You know, this one didn't work out, but now I just want to show you again, 
just the grovel ability once you get to like there's nothing here the mashup couldn't do this like the sweet potato could do that you know the seaside could maybe do this do that but this board does that the best because of all that space up by the nose and you can just hang out up there and ride it kind of like you would a longboard And right there, see, like, just literally riding it until those fins hit the shore. That is what you got to do on these kind of days. And I think because the tail is kind of like a wider, blocky tail, almost like the Machado Cotto, it lets you plane through those kind of flat surfaces. This wave, there's a single clip on YouTube now of this wave. I really like this wave. I don't know why. I think because it's super long and I end up hitting it a bunch here. Again. Again. Oh, almost fell, but the nose, that didn't fall. But that's what the board's great at, just doing little flick ups. And that's accompanied by the twin fin to allow to do that. Lemonade out a little nothing lemons here because it's just so fast, the board, and has so much planing surface with the hull. And as you can see here, that spine, it really ends up being kind of like a mashup on steroids. That spine goes up high. What's funny though, is the board does a lot better just plowing through flat white water. And again, I'm gonna show a lot of these clips and keep them going because I wanna show how the board can grovel. But see that right there? It really is like an extended spine that somehow doesn't feel like you're on one side or the other. It feels like you're on a flat surface somehow. I don't know how Tomo does it. It probably has something to do with the wider nose. That's a longboard type nose and just the tail. And you got to include some falls because we don't land all the waves. But I really like the board for those drop-ins when you can kind of sweep the bottom turn and then just come up and hit it. It's really fun for that. Again, I didn't, you know, slide out once on this board, I don't think, even on the bigger stuff. I mean, there it slides just as much as I want it to slide. And that is why you get addicted to twin fins for just being able to throw the board around so easily. And then you go back to like your thruster or your quad and it's not as easy to do that. But maybe you land it if you're on the thruster or quad. Here I'm generating speed out of nothingness. And the big, flat, fat, thick nose can let you just get up on these kind of floaters. Helps the board stay up there and be nice and stable and then still land it on a long, stable surface. Here's the dimensions. You want to pause that. And just checking out a little more of the board here. Artistic shots, little Ken Burns here, Ken Burns there. Again, you really become just to love this this shape of bore because it's so unique it's so different than everything else that you just become enamored with it and once you ride it more and more and you really just understand it it is such a fun board to ride and it can excel in these smaller crappier gutless conditions and then when you see Tomo riding it in Lennox and it's going off and he's on the 6-0 it can obviously perform in those bigger, better barreling conditions. And here I had to show off to this lovely family. And this turn felt really good because again, the twin fin, you can just throw it out. It catches nicely when you're reverting back to down the line. And you're not, it doesn't feel like you're riding a 6-3. It feels like I think it is the Ibolic Volcanic that's just so light. And I did check, it's not as light as helium, but to me, it feels just like that. And the extra bit of stiffness with this board, because it's so thin, it I think helps a little bit to help it just plow through chunder. Like on this one, you're just, I didn't mess up a teeny bit there, don't tell anyone, but you can just keep it going and kind of the stiffness helps you correct almost like a big mind expander snowboard that's plowing through rough chunder that kind of nose the spoon-esque nose 
helps you just get through there when you need. I did show off to the family a bunch. I get a lot of sick waves. I like this nice zoomed out shot because it shows you how long and far this wave is. It's a nothing burger wave. It's a epic wave if you're in Virginia. But I went from, this was like, you know, a 25 second wave. That's longer than, that's like a wave at half a wave at Kelly's Ranch. All right, so the waves are like kind of pumping today. Somewhat point breaky. Just what the Revo Max wants on its list of wants and needs. Let's shred. And now a few um, great little waves at this sunset session that was super fun. And just really makes you appreciate a board like this. When you're out there, it's really fun. The sun's out. You're flying like on this wave. You can still shred it. And then if a couple little lully waves come like on this one, you still have enough speed, enough gravel ability in the board to have a lot of fun and to make it feel like you're on a proper board. So the Revo Max by Firewire, it's a home run. It is a home run. Yeah, so overall the board's just like really unique. It has, you know, essentially it's a snowboard. The nose and the tail aren't that much dissimilar in the width. It stays super thin, which is really crazy. It does not have a lot of the step downness on the last other boards I've been kind of checking out. It stays flat all the way to the very end. It's a little bit of curve and the rails are very thin. Very, very thin, which is nice because it makes it not bog as much. And I think it just, it kind of is more of like an older school board which is was a lot thinner back in the day. And because it's so thin, it can contain the thinness all the way through the nose and all the way through the tail. And then it doesn't get as razor thin as some of the other Machado shapes, etc. Um, super unique board, and again, really, really like riding it, and I really recommend it as kind of like a grovelly twin board. Um, somewhat of a step up board, it's kind of bigger. You can throw in slightly bigger fins. There's so much planing surface up here, you can kind of ride it up here when it's smaller, like a long board, and when it gets bigger, you can start really shredding it. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, to another Hero's Journey show. If you want to watch my Machado Cotto surfboard review, you can click right here. Or if you want to watch uh, my mashup by Firewire surfboard review, you can click right there. Smash the like, hit subscribe. Till next time, we out. Peace.